about 30 years ago, I was having a surgery and something went wrong. I either lost too much blood or it was anesthesia because I wasn't coming back out of uh, back up and out in the waiting room in the recovery room like they wanted because the first thing I remember is leaving my body. I don't remember hanging on the ceiling or things like that that other people say. I just remember being out in space. Space was very dark. I remember looking at the earth and it was about the size of a moon, what I was looking at and I was just in awe. I was like, oh my gosh, that is so remarkable, so inspirational to look at the earth. And the next thing I remember is being in a black void. I remember being in a place without featureless, just without any light. I knew it was expansive, it wasn't like you're in a closet or something. I knew I was in a big, vast area, but it was very, very dark. Funny thing, it was not scary. It was very healing. There was something about this dark void that was drawing from me and giving to me in some way and balancing me in some way that I cannot explain it totally, but it was a positive experience. And I'm one of those people that is afraid of the dark. So that's interesting. And then the next thing I remember is going through a life review. The only thing about going through the life review is that a lot of my memory was, I was not allowed to bring it back. I was not allowed to remember a lot of it. I remember that I was told that there were golden opportunities ahead of me. And I think that was really important for me to hear because at the time this happened, I was in a depression. And I had a lot of trauma early life. And I know that I had considered, but I had never actually gone through it or tried it. So I think it was important to hear that, that this life is very important, that I'm learning a lot and that there are golden opportunities ahead. I was told that God, he wasn't like a person. He wasn't in a form. I remember just a lot of very white light, the kind of white light that doesn't burn your eyes. It's not intense. Um, it's a very soft, beautiful presence. I remember feeling just surrounded or blanketed in love. And I remember just a lot of joy, like it was a wonderful feeling. And I felt so complete and so whole, and I knew who I was. I think the most prominent features of this, the things that I really did come back with, is knowing just for sure that there is a relationship with God. It's a very primal relationship. It was like missing a loved one. And you didn't know you missed the loved one until he was there. And I'm going to use the word he. Although there wasn't a form or a body, there was just a lot of light. God's voice was male and God's voice was like surround sound. Um, another thing, I don't think God has any preference for any particular religion. I'm very sure of that. Like I said, I'd, I'd always have a lot of questions, but I don't think he pays any attention to the religion that someone professes to be. He is very interested in us. We are growing in consciousness and we are growing in our capacity to accept and love others. You know, unconditional love of self, unconditional love of others. I was arguing with him at the end of my experience because I did not want to come back to my life. My life wasn't totally bad, but I just, I wanted to stay. I said, I want to stay with you. I mean, I was, I was just, you know, so aware. A friend of mine, a very wise friend, he was actually a spiritual medium. And I was in his development class when um, I was 19. And we were talking about beauty. And he said, beauty is consciousness. And it's something I took with me and really thought about because most of our consciousness is an energetic body <laughs> that we carry with us, which is really good to know if people want to know what happened to a loved one or what's going to happen to them, because we were all going to face that transition. It's nothing to fear. I've been on other near-death experience or website. You know, each person comes back from their experience, I'd say more than half of the people that have a near-death experience did not want to return. Some people say something like God asked them if they wanted to continue with their life and be sent back or if they wanted to stay. In my case, I had, I did not 
you know, I know there's free will, but I was really arguing for staying. I was saying, I was told I had to go back and that it would be my benefit to go back and go through these experiences ahead of me. You know, they would be, I guess, producing the desired outcome of growth and, like I said, evolving spiritually and consciously. And that I wouldn't want, I would really regret not going through this complete lifetime. When I said I didn't want to go back and I had responsibilities, I was a young mother. That's a weird thing. And I really loved my kids. God said to me, Nancy, I am there with you. I'm there also. In other words, he was in my earth life and could be just as much in my earth life if I would allow it. So he was saying, and he used these words, I'm the one that closes the door. Wow. Of all the things that I experienced, that was the thing that stayed very strongly with me as I was the one that closed the door because I don't know how I had to figure that out. Like, how was that happening? <laughs> and why was that happening? And all those big questions like, how did I do that? I think a part of it's just not being 100% sure that there is a God. You know, if you're not sure of that, if you haven't had a lot of profound experiences, you may not know what you're missing. You may not know that you're closing the door. So I guess one of my favorite paintings is Jesus knocking at the door. I love that painting because it, it's just reminding me that God wants us to allow the relationship, to allow the connection. So I guess that was one of the more profound ex things that I experienced just before I, I woke up, you know, and was really back from surgery and everything. That was one of the last things I remember him saying that he would be with me. In other words, all now all I needed to do was to ask for help and be aware and be certain that help was on its way and that God was present and would listen that he that he wasn't that far away. He's not far away at all. It's like he's our next breath. So I came back with that realization, which was really good. I actually have a master's degree in clinical mental health counseling. And I think I chose that because of wanting to help other people. I came back with more compassion, more empathy. That's a good thing too. I can appreciate that. I know that helping other people is definitely a big part of my purpose being here. So I don't have all the answers for sure, but I don't think that's exactly the main point. <laughs> I think the main point is that we are energetic consciousness. We all have a spark of the divine within us. We all have the same father. And like Jesus said, when he said our father, he wasn't saying my daddy, <laughs> he's saying all of us. You know, some people are more progressed and more developed and more aware, um, but we all have the same divine spark. Staring your soul at the